everybody, my name is Michael Quinn. I'm one of the directors of the Quinn Group. This week on Quintessential TV, we'll be discussing testamentary capacity. Capacity is a key concept when it comes to forming testamentary intent and creating a will. It means that you have a sound mind and memory with an understanding of what you are doing. If you lack testamentary capacity, your will is almost always considered invalid and inoperative. Notably, a decision of the courts last year discussed the topics of sanity and mental impairment in relation to testamentary capacity. In the matter heard by the New South Wales Court of Appeal, a deceased testator's capacity to make a will and form testamentary intent was questioned due to his state of mind. The testator Croft was noted to be suffering from delusions and hallucinations that may have influenced his decisions. A delusion as defined by the court is an irrational, fixed and permanent belief out of which a person cannot be reasoned. The court heard that Croft's final will distributed his 3.2 million estate solely to his sixth daughter. Anna, save for 40,000 that he gave to each of his other five daughters. The question here was whether Croft was in such a mindset that he made a decision he did not truly understand or wish for in his will. The relevant evidence demonstrated that while Croft did have hallucinations, they were episodic and did not impair him in his decision making or comprehension at the time his will was formed. Croft also suffered dementia. However, the executors of his estate were able to defend claims that his conditions did not deprive Croft of his capacity. As it turned out, a family lawsuit had caused Croft to favour his daughter Anna above his others, as she had supported him and taken his side. The case was favourable of Croft's capacity and allowed his will to enter probate. Notably, the above case does not represent the common outcome. Matters of testamentary capacity are usually not so easily solved where the testator suffered illnesses that impaired their mental health and memory. While the evidence may favour the testator and the court may rule in a positive manner for the estate, it is not a good thought to have capacity in question in the first place. In New South Wales, the Law Society has a set of guidelines that assist solicitors in determining a person's capacity at the time of executing and creating a will. If you do create a will, your solicitor should be aware of these guidelines and follow them in ne if necessary, and we certainly do that here at Quinn Lawyers. Further, there is a test that can assist in clarifying testamentary intent and capacity as introduced by the 1870 case of Banks and Goodfellow. The test asks if the testator understands what it means to be making a will, what assets they possess and are leaving to others, who the people are who could make a claim on the estate, and what moral obligation is owed to those people. As is most often the case with dementia and mental impairment, not having an adequate grasp on reality deems a person incapable of fully understanding the concepts listed above. If you wish to protect your will at the time of its creation, it is always a good safeguard to have a qualified solicitor and health professional, typically a psychologist, assess your capacity. This way, it is difficult to dispute your capacity should it come into question after your death. At the Quinn Group, wills and estates is one of our areas of expertise. In our ear alerts, we have explored topics including the risks of what informal wills and what to do if you've lost an original. If you'd like to know more about testamentary capacity or you need help in this regard, please contact us. You're welcome to email us at info at quins.com.au. We'd love to get your feedback with relation to Quintessential TV, so please like, comment and subscribe. We look forward to seeing you all again next week. I'm Michael Quinn. Bye for now.